Let's talk about perfect games. Allow me to explain what exactly a perfect game is. It's simple. It's a game where a pitcher or pitchers do not allow a single batter to reach base. That's it. 27 batters come to the plate and all 27 are retired. But remember, a perfect game is different from a no hitter. In a no hitter, batters of the team that go hitless can still reach base via a walk, hit by pitch, error, drop third strike, etc. A perfect game is absolutely no base runners at all. 27 up, 27 down. Sounds simple and easy, right? Well, not so much. As of the end of the 2018 baseball season, there have been 218,168 regular season games played. At least, I think it's regular season. This is according to baseball reference. Let's assume it does include postseason, but we'll leave that out for now. Out of all those games, there have been only 23 official perfect games. 23! 23 out of 218,168. 0.01054233434% of all major league games have been perfect. As you can see, these are rare to come by. But why are perfect games so hard to accomplish? Well, the only answer is, it's really hard to retire that many batters in a row. Really, really hard. In 2018, for example, the major league average for batting average was 0.248 and on base percentage was 0.318. So, at any random at bat during this past season, there was about a 25% chance the batter would get a hit and about a 32% chance the batter would reach base. Now, I know this isn't perfect and there are a lot more factors that affect the batter reaching base, but this is simply a rough estimate. Take that 318 on base percentage. A 31.8% chance of reaching base statistically, that's a 68.2% chance that any given at bat will not result in the batter reaching base. Using this percentage, we can estimate the odds that two consecutive at bats will not result in a batter reaching base. The odds two consecutive batters don't reach base is about 46.51%. Three straight batters not reaching base would be 31.72% chance, and so on. The odds that a batter will not reach base 27 consecutive times is, get ready for it, 0.003252206511%. That is 1 in 30,748. A quick Google search says the odds of a perfect game happening are 1 in 46,800. Again, there are many, many other factors. My estimate is very rough. Ever since 1998, each season features 2,430 total games. Using all of these previous odds that I've mentioned, we can expect to see a perfect game about every 6.3 seasons. I'm sure a couple of you viewers might be thinking, wait, 30,748 divided by 2,430 equals 12.6. So shouldn't we see a perfect game every 12 and a half seasons on average? That math is correct, but that's not accounting for one small thing. Remember, there are two pitchers that start for both teams. Theoretically, both starting pitchers can go on and each record 27 consecutive outs. So, we take how often we should see a perfect game and divide it by two for both pitchers. Statistically, we should see perfect game every 6.32674897127 seasons. Multiply that by 23 gives us about 145 and a half. Considering there's been 138 years from the first perfect game until today, my math isn't too far off, but it's not perfect. Remember, on base percentage does not account for a batter reaching base if he reaches on an error, interference, obstruction, or uncaught third strike. In other words, despite the fact that a batter can reach base in certain instances, those instances do not increase on base percentage. I'm using the on base percentage from 2018 alone, and 162 game seasons were only adopted back in 1962. To sum everything I've said so far in one sentence, 
keeping that many batters off base is really, really hard. Let's forget about the math and go right into the perfect games themselves. The first was thrown on June 12, 1880 by Lee Richmond. Four days later, he graduated from Brown University. The second perfect game was thrown just five days after the first by future Hall of Famer John Montgomery Ward, the shortest amount of time between perfect games. Cy Young's perfect game came in the middle of his 45 consecutive scoreless inning streak, a record at the time. Addie Joss's perfect game used the least amount of pitches at just 74. Charlie Robertson threw his perfect game in just his fifth career game and fourth career start. Don Larson threw perhaps the most famous perfect game in baseball history. He was perfect in Game 5 of the 1956 World Series, the only perfect game in postseason history and just the second no-hitter in postseason history. The game also featured a combined seven future Hall of Famers and brought the Yankees to a three games to two lead. They eventually won the series in seven games. Jim Bunning's perfect game on Father's Day in 1964 was the first in the National League since Ward's, nearly 84 years to the date. Sandy Koufax struck out 14 batters, the most strikeouts in a perfect game. The game he pitched also featured the least amount of hits combined from both teams at just one. Catfish Hunter holds the record for youngest pitcher to throw one in the modern era at just 22 years and 30 days old. Len Barker became the 10th pitcher ever to throw one. His catcher, Ron Hassey, is the only catcher ever to catch two perfect games. Mike Witt threw his on the last day of the 1984 season. The only run was driven in by Reggie Jackson, who also played in Catfish Hunter's perfect game. Four years later, Tom Browning pitched his perfect game against the Dodgers. Right fielder Paul O'Neill would end up playing in two more perfect games, all three on the winning side, the most ever by a player. Dennis Martinez became the first foreign-born pitcher to throw a perfect game, and he blanked the Dodgers in July of 1991. In the strike-shortened season, Kenny Rogers threw his against the Angels. Home plate umpire Ed Bean only umpired 36 games in the big leagues, but this perfect game was one of them. In 1998, David Wells threw a perfect game against the Twins at Yankee Stadium. Hungover. The night before, Wells was out at a Saturday night live party and was out well into the morning. Despite the fact that he had no sleep and was hungover, he threw a perfect game that day. One year later, teammate David Cohn blanked the Expos on Yogi Berra Day at Yankee Stadium. Don Larson, who threw the first Yankee perfect game, was in attendance, marking the only time a pitcher who threw a perfect game was at another. Randy Johnson became the oldest pitcher to ever throw a perfect game when he did at the age of 40 years and 256 days. Mark Burley's perfect game five years later is well known for the game-saving catch by Dwayne Wise in the ninth inning. It was also his second career no-hitter. One year later, Dallas Braden threw his perfect game against the Rays, making it the first time a team was on the losing side in back-to-back -back perfect games. Just 20 days later, Roy Halladay threw his perfect game against the Florida Marlins. It was just the second time ever, and first time in over 100 years, two perfect games occurred in the same month. Philip Humber holds the record for least amount of career victories among pitchers who've thrown perfect games at just 16. Matt Cain tied Sandy Koufax for most strikeouts in a perfect game with 14. And lastly, Felix Hernandez is the most recent to throw a perfect game. His perfect game came against the Rays, their third perfect game loss in four seasons. Four players on the Rays would join the ultra-exclusive club on being on the losing side of three perfect games. There's no telling when the next perfect game can happen. Using my less than perfect math from before, we would be due for one in the 2019 season, but we'll wait and see what happens.